There'll be no more room for repentance. There'll be no more room for repentance on the day of judgment. Amen. And that is when mercy shall no longer plead for the beautiful race. It was this sense of sin, bringing the Father's wrath upon him as man's substitute, that made the cup he drank so bitter and broke the heart of the Son of God. Amen. This is the cross that Jesus carried on our behalf. But what happened? When he began to teach his disciples and followers that he was going to die at the hands of the Jewish leaders and their Gentile overlords, as we read in Luke 9.22, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders, and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. His popularity sank. Many of his followers rejected him and stopped following him. And why? This is the same question that we are asking ourselves this morning. How many of us are genuinely willing to carry his own cross and follow Jesus? His followers that rejected him were not able to put to death their own ideas. They were not able to put to death their own plans. They were not able to put to death their own heart desires and exchange them for him. When the choirs were singing, I surrender everything to him. I was also wondering whether we really know the meaning of what we are saying. I was just wondering because when I was preparing this message, I was shaking myself. A few minutes ago, they were singing the same song here. I surrender myself, give myself to him, I give myself away. I said, do you really understand what you are talking about? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Many churches today are full of born again Christians. But a high percentage of them are still holding tenaciously to their own ideas. Amen. Amen. And yet, there are no optional ways to serve the Lord. Only one way in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 Many Christian leaders holding exalted positions in their various churches are more or less decorated leaders who worship God at their own convenience and make no effort to seek wisdom and faith through hearing from their church's Bible class, Bible study class, and prayer centers. And how can such leaders share spiritual wisdom and knowledge with those under them? That is not possible. As you cannot give what you don't have or share what you don't possess. We are once again appealing to all our leaders to rise up to the expectation of true discipleship Amen. and leadership. Amen. May God touch your heart this morning. Amen. How many of us are still finding it difficult to put our plans to death in order to follow Jesus, when Jesus called upon his followers to follow him, some tried to give excuses. As we read in Luke 9, 59 to 62, and he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. But go now and preach the kingdom of God. Amen. Another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me go and bid them fear which which are at home at my house. And the ushers take care of those children, please, so that they not disturb them. So this is very important. Amen. Please do your job, take them out.
Right. And I said also, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me go and bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And what do we mean by that? Yes. In those days, there were no caterpillars, no motorized engine to, to till the ground. So they have a wooden plow with a mool to draw the, the cart, the plow. And the farmer has to concentrate because what happens is when he's taking the whole floor, he wants to make sure that as the soil is spreading the seed, the seed are falling along that path. If you turn right like that, the moon may go into the rocks, either damage the plow or lead the plow into a further ground. So, which means, this just is using this as a parable to us. That you must concern, you must focus. If you want to follow me, Amen. once you put your hand on that plow, Amen. you don't go back and bury your father. Hallelujah. You don't go back and see your wife. Hallelujah. You don't go back and see your fellow man meet again. Amen. You sacrifice all of them for him. Amen. Otherwise, you are not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what he is saying. Uh, most of us, not like them today, we know we have to come to church to worship God. We know we have to make provisions within our plans for the propagation of the gospel through our church, yet we always expect the pastors and reverends to appeal to us about our obligation to Christ Jesus. Despite all the mercies and grace that the Lord is lavishing on us, Amen. even in our sinful state, Amen. it is not supposed to be this way. Amen. What about our heart's desires? Even though we hear every Sunday, or whenever we used to come to church, that to work with God, we must serve Him faithfully in spirit and in how many of us are serving God in spirit and in truth? How many of us can truly relate half of the teachings we hear every Sunday to our families and children when we get home? Amen. How many parents do take the pain or the time to bother to ask their children what lessons they learn at the Sunday school when they reach home? Our Lord realized this lapses in us when he gave the parables of the sower. My prayer today is that all those who are hearing me this morning will not go back being the seeds that fall on the road paths or on the rock so that we will not lose out of the grace which the precious blood of Jesus was shed for our salvation. Amen. Following Jesus to us is easy when life runs smoothly. Our true commitment to Him is revealed during periods of trials and tribulation. Jesus never assured us that the road shall be smooth. He assured us that trials will come to His followers. As we read in John 16.33, I have spoken to you that in me ye might have peace. In the world you have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah! It is not easy to follow Jesus. True discipleship means great sacrifice. And Jesus never hid the cost. As he reiterated in John 15, 80 to 23. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye we are of the world, the world will love his own. Mm -hmm. But because ye are not of the world, 
but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. Remember the word I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will also keep yours. But all things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hated me hated my father also. Yeah. Fellow brethren in Christ, we are once again admonishing ourselves during this period of Lent, a season of repentance and reconciliation with God. To take that bold decision, to set your hands firmly on the plow and follow Jesus without looking back. Amen. If you have not yet done so, and for those who have set their hands on the plow, we do pray for you to have the courage, the endurance, Amen. and faith to have no cause to look back again Amen. as such feeble minded believers are not fit for the kingdom of God. Some people still believe that when they are ready, they will decide to follow Jesus, forgetting that tomorrow belongs only to God, Amen. and it may be too late. Amen. There was a testimony about an old lady in her 90s who had never been to church in 70 years. She was living alone, and she used to do her shopping dragging a shopping cart along footpaths up the hill to her house. One day, a pastor who used to see this old lady approached her and offered to help her with her luggage. But she refused, thinking this man was also some of the area boys that used to bust into her apartment and steal her food stamps money and stuff in the house. When eventually she accepted this pastor's offer, he followed her home and found her apartment upside down, broken windows and broken door locks. And while he was wondering what kind of life was this old lady living, she told him that she lived at the mercy of the hoodlums in the neighborhood who used to come and eat all her food and see her belongings. As she feared for her life, hence could not call the police. The pastor went home, came back with his tools and fixed all the broken locks, and made fire to heat the room for the old lady. He began to introduce Jesus to her, since she said that she used to hear about Jesus 70 years ago while she was a nurse at a local hospital. One day, she told the pastor to baptize her so that she too could become a Christian. Amen. And the pastor did as she requested. When it was two days to her becoming 91 years of age, the pastor, together with his wife and some members of their church, bought flowers and made birthday cakes with a plan to go and give the old lady a surprise birthday gift. They knock and knock at the door of her house, but there was no answer. So they called the police, and when they entered her apartment, she was sitting on her dining room table with Holy Bible in her hand and cold smile on her face as she was already dead two hours before the pastor's party arrived. The pastor's testimony. During the following revival, more many souls for Christ as many prayed to see Jesus before they see death. Amen. May God Almighty Amen. grant us this grace this morning that in our life we shall see Jesus before we see death. Amen. In Luke 9, 57 to 62, three people 
seem willing to follow Jesus when Jesus questioned them further. Their commitment to Jesus was half-hearted at best. Let me go and bury my father. Or let me go and bid my family farewell before I can follow you. And how are these reasons differ from all the basket full of flimsy excuses we always give for not coming to church or attending the Bible study in God's people church? Are we not failing to count the cost of following him as those three weak-minded followers? No one was willing to take up his cross and crucify upon it his own interest. Therefore, Jesus appeared to dissuade them. How different from the typical gospel presentation. How many people will respond to an altar call this morning that went this way? Come follow Jesus and you may face the loss of friends, family, reputation, career, and possibly even your life. How many will get up from his seat? You, eh? Amen. The number of false converts will likely decrease. Such a call is what Jesus meant when he said, take up your cross and follow me. There are some questions which I often ask myself to even assess myself if I have truly taken up my cross and following Jesus without still looking back. I will ask you this morning these same questions, which you should answer in your heart and also assess yourself where you stand with Jesus today. The first question. Are you willing to follow Jesus? If it means losing some of your closest friends, what do I mean? Once you totally surrender your life to Christ and become a born again Christian, you will surely lose some of your old club member friends <laughs> and worldly societies. As I did, they decided me. Some of them will alienate themselves from you because you have become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And don't laugh. No more swearing like before. No more of those dirty jokes. No more booze and late night parties. But the new way of life is strange, of course, to them because your friends are still in the world. No more swearing. Amen. Amen. The second question, are you willing to follow Jesus? If it means alienation from your family, let us see Matthew 4, 21 to 22. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father bending their necks, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship, and their father and followed him. How many of us can leave our, our loved ones when we receive the call and just obey like James and John? Number three, are you willing to follow Jesus? If it means the loss of your reputation, in John 3, 1 to 2, we also read, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Like Nicodemus, how many of us feel uncomfortable or embarrassed when being identified as followers of Jesus Christ or servants of God, when in the company of our social friends. I have witnessed some reverends removing their priesthood white color so that they could gulp down a pint of Guinness stout or be like the old boys. Certainly. 
Nicodemus too could not risk the embarrassment he would face from his colleagues if they get to know that he went to seek knowledge from Jesus. The big men in positions of authority come under the shadow of darkness to consult with prophets and men of God. For, are you willing to follow Jesus? If it means losing your job, Many teachers have lost their jobs today in America for their teaching their students in the classes about the man called Jesus. Today, the Holy Bible is forbidden in most state colleges in America. And what do we have today? Moral decadence, leading to promiscuity, drug addiction, little regard for human life, a manifestation of satanic vices. America can no longer control her children as there are no more fear of the Lord. There's no more a slogan of the so-called modern society. Are you willing to follow Jesus? If it means losing your life. We read in Acts 6, 7-9. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Syrians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Sicilia and of Asia disputing with Stephen. Then in verses, chapter 7, verses 55 to 60. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly to heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, Lay not this sin to their child. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And like Stephen, how many Christians have lost their lives in the name of Jesus Christ? Amen. But take comfort. For it is better for you to die for Christ Jesus than to gain the whole world and lose eternal life. Matthew 16, 25, 27 reads, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Amen. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Amen. But what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father Hallelujah. with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Amen. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here who shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Amen. 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 In some places of the world, these consequences are reality. But notice how the question I've raised, are you willing Following Jesus doesn't necessarily mean all these things will happen to you. Amen. So don't be frightened. Amen. But are you willing to take up your cross? If there comes a point in your life where you are faced with a choice, Jesus or the comfort of this life, which one will you choose? Commitment to Christ means taking up your cross daily, giving up your hopes, mm -hmm. your dreams, mm -hmm. your possession, even your very life, if need be, mm -hmm. for the cause of Christ. 
Only if you willingly take up your cross, may you be called his disciple. As we also read in Luke 14, 26 to 27. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. The reward is worth the price. Jesus followed his call of death to self. Take up your cross and follow me. Amen. With the gift of life in Christ. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. Amen. May God give us the courage, Amen. the boldness, Amen. and strong faith in God to enable us to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord our Father. We thank you this morning. For this message you have sent to us. You made us to be aware. Of how near or how far we to you. Touch our hearts oh Lord. We pray Father Almighty for wisdom. We pray for our heart of understanding because if you don't reveal it to us, we cannot understand it. Reveal your message, O oh Lord, that we may prepare our soul, we may prepare our heart for the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Father, because of the assurance we have in this church that you are always with us and you always answer our prayer. Jesus name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. Amen.